Hey guys, Keith here, Two Guys How To's and uh, the Fish Kings. And I just wanted to show you guys um, about as, as far as this pump that I ordered. And I don't know if many of you guys are in the ponds or what have you, but I got the MEA Pro 5 Plus and it's by Matala. And uh, I got it off of eBay, it was about $424. Uh, I ordered it yesterday, it came today, which was incredible. Everybody else said they were six to eight weeks out on the pump, which would have brought me more into the middle of summer. The algae blooms, the low air aeration for the fish, the enzymes aren't getting spread around, the good beneficial bacteria as well. So I want this thing in the water as, as much as quick as possible and pump as much air as possible. This particular one, the MAE Pro, and uh, I just took it out of the box. You can see it's the Pro 5 Plus for 10,000 to 24,000 gallons. Um, and you can measure it, crunch your numbers as far as square footage or just area footage and then kind of just figure out how deep your pond is here and there. Uh, mine, I kind of went a little overkill because once we dig it out a little bit more, this one I won't have to upgrade or add any more extensions on here to have more aerators, which you can always do on the bigger pumps. The smaller ones might not be able to handle it, but uh, you know, it's whatever you can afford. Uh, but it's got a three year warranty on this motor. The motor that came in was an HK80LH and uh, it says right here on the box, Matala three year warranty, which I do like. And uh, it comes with the registration card and all that. So make sure you fill that out, send that in. I mean, the pump is, is heavy duty. I mean, it's got, it's got some serious weight to it. I mean, uh, I'm actually impressed. It could probably sit right out in the rain and snow and everything. I'm gonna put it underneath like a fake rock with some uh, holes drilled in it and some screenings just so it can breathe, but it looks good down near the pond. Uh, and you know, your typical plug, so you're just gonna plug that in. And uh, it, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining. I got it from Best Planet uh, for about $424. Like I said, I ordered it yesterday. The FedEx, FedEx guy came today and dropped it off. So I was gonna chill out inside, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna get this thing done. And uh, it comes with all the, all the, the bells and whistles. It comes with your attachments. Uh, that the, the 3 h tube is going to go on. It comes with your dual diverter. You're going to screw one of these diffusers in each side on these weighted bases. And it comes with uh, two 9-inch ring weighted bases. You just pop these caps off here. It's all hollow in there. You can put sand or stone or stone, small stone like pea gravel or something in there. I'm going to run sand because that's what we have around here. And uh, get it as full as possible, which I'll get into and then add a little bit of water to it to top it off. It comes with the two nine inch diverter rings, which have the threads on the bottom that screw right into this, you know, the dual diverter base here. So we're just gonna put these on later and you just screw them on, boom. Maybe a little bit of Teflon tape, make sure you get no air leaks, pretty simple. It's all rubber. This is like a nice thick uh, rubber, you know, EPMD, maybe something like that, kind of padding that can withstand the abuse of being in the water 24 hours a day of, of pressure. And uh, comes with all the other bells and whistles here, all your clamps and stainless steel crank clamps and bolts, a couple other tube pieces in case you need them. We're not gonna worry about that one there now. Uh, so all in all, it seems to be pretty good. It's got the fitting that even goes onto the motor here, the tube that comes off. This is it's just gonna pull air in from this cover here and blow out. So you've got your 90 degree or you've got your straight, depending on what you how what what type of tube and where you want the tube to go on your placement. And it does come with a, a 50 foot weighted hose, and this is 3 8 and uh, it's it's weighted because when you when you put it down in there, it's just going to line on the bottom of the pond. You're never going to see it. You know, chances are hitting it with fishing rods or anything like that, lures. It, it, it's just not going to happen. It's so thick. I mean, I can barely even press it in like I'm doing, you know, bi, you know, bicep curls right now. This is a heavy duty hose and you can buy more of this. This comes with a 30 foot, 3 8 weighted, but you can get, it, you know, any increments by the foot, 50, 100 or whatever, if you want to run multiple diffusers, if your pump can handle that. And uh, we're going to, we're going to start getting this thing together. Um, you know, I'm liking it. So in this base here, we're gonna have to get some kind of sand. So what I did is I made a little funnel, but I'm gonna show you guys how to make a quick funnel. I just grabbed a piece of um, cardboard from the recycling bin and I just, you know, ripped it out. And uh, we had some power bars or something in here and I'm just gonna fold this thing like this. If you have a different funnel, you can use that as well. On what I, what I was gonna do though is fold this and because you can flex the paper a little bit better, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this versus uh, one of my hard plastic funnels and you can just make it coned at the bottom and pour your sand in the top. Just take a little bit of tape. You know, if you don't have a funnel and you do have some, you know, some cardboard or something like that and then there you go. And this will fit right down inside this hole on this diffuser and you just put that down in there and you're, we're just going to keep spooning that sand in there little by little or if you have another funnel that'll go up in here because this being squishable you can kind of get that sand around unless that sand's super super dry but this sand's been outside it's got a little moisture to it so we don't want it clumping up if it does we can always just squeeze it like this and uh, we're going to get started basically I'm going to move this camera over a little bit more and show you guys exactly what I'm doing here with the with the, the sand down in there and I've got just a little Tupperware like I said I made this I made this uh, funnel here earlier and I'm gonna set it in there and I'm just gonna take some nice play sand play sand would even be better the finer the, the easier and I just got a little Tupperware container here and we're just gonna keep pouring that in and you keep pouring it in and pouring it in until it won't take any more and then sometimes as you pour it in you're gonna move this thing around and you're going to keep just moving this around to where the sand gets all over there. There are some screw holes here, but once you fill it up, we're going to go ahead and put this plug back in. Put the plug in, and when you turn it upside down, all that sand will come out of those little stainless steel screw holes that we're going to need later on to attach our, our uh, diverter tubes and everything like that. So I'm going to fill this up on the side, but I already have this one filled up and you can see it's it's heavy and when you take this little top cap off of here you can see it's full all the way with sand I mean I, I poked my finger in there I got it in there I shook this thing up and uh, it's not airtight so water is gonna get in there once you put it down in the pond it's gonna just saturate in there and just make it even heavier like this is probably a good 10 pounds now so I'm gonna get to filling up the other diverter or the diffuser weighted base and these are totally fish friendly uh, they will not they won't rot out they won't poison the fish they're heavy duty we're gonna get this thing filled up and then we're gonna we're gonna start putting everything together and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how and we're gonna get this thing down in the water tonight I'll be back in a second okay guys we got the sand in there I didn't want to bore you with that and I just kept putting it in and that that actually that paper funnel made it real good because my sand was outside and it was a little moist so I could flex that funnel and kind of get it around in there I took my fingers and I pushed the sand as far back and you can see I've got the, the sand all the way in there up to the top and you can add a little bit of water to make it more heavy just to cover that surface area that's going to be in there but when you put it down in the water the water is going to leach in there those caps aren't airtight so we're going to make sure these are nice and clean put our caps back on boom boom and if you've got these threaded these threaded um, bolts down in here these nuts that are sunk in there just put your finger over that top if you got sand in them and just clean it out give it a couple taps look down in there keep the sand and stuff away from the pump and away from all the hoses you don't want that going in there clogging up the lines this one looks pretty good so this one's good to go the caps on it and uh, these have a nice nice handle on them you know now they're probably about 10 pounds each so they got a nice sturdy handle we're gonna put these two together like this just simple like that you got your your diffuser T and it came with a fitting here and on these particular fittings they're made for different size hoses depending on what pump so if you can see it steps up don't worry about that just push that pipe that hose on that weighted hose as far as you can go um, to get to get it on there and you'll see like this is a 3 8 weighted hose and it's it's heavy it's got nice nice weight to it we're just gonna push it on up to to there you know if we push it up any farther this might be quarter 3 8 you know 7 16 3 8 something like that just it steps up quarter 3 8 and half half would be for your big daddy pump and all that we're only going with what they gave us and it came with the 30 foot weighted 3 8 hose so we're gonna we're gonna push that on there so what we're gonna do is we're going to get uh, we're not going to put that on yet we're going to get this T down in here and we're going to put this fitting on here first so you're just going to go ahead and, and this T comes threaded it's got the two top threads here for your two diffusers your nine inch diffusers and the one T is you're going to be your air inlet this is where the pump hose is going to go down and feed air into this so we're just going to screw this on and get it get it nice and hand tight I got a little crescent wrench here 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna snug it a little bit but these are plastic you don't want to you don't want to break it so it just needs a little snugging you know plastic on plastic I wouldn't worry about any uh, P PTFE tape or anything like that because you don't want to add any chemicals to the water and now that that's on that's ready to go we can go ahead and uh, before you put that on you want to get this hose on here so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a little bit of country lube but you can do what you want and get that good and, and going and before I do that, I'm going to run these two clamps that I had over here. And it came with some clamps, but I swapped mine out to stainless steel because I wasn't quite sure if theirs were or not. So I'm going to put my two clamps on. And I, most people use one. I double them up. Get a little bit of lube down in there. And you're just going to push this bad boy on as far as you can get it. And just keep spinning it around. Like I said, it's going to go up, up and over that quarter. And keep going up to that that half inch or the the three eighths line and it's it's pretty hard to get up in there this actually might even be bigger than that if you wanted to go with a one inch line it looks like it's maybe three eighths half something else and all the way up to an inch this looks like a universal adapter so now that we got that on and it's all the way up as far as it can go or i'll max this i'll max this line out and i'm just going to run my two double clamps right where that hose is boom boom and I'm gonna get my little screwdriver and I'll show you. I usually use a, a quarter inch drive, but I'll show you with this so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna run these, if those two diffusers are feeding up, I'm gonna run the, the screws to the clamps up. That way, if I need to drag it and pull it out of the pond or what have you, uh, it, those clamps aren't gonna be scraping down on the bottom. So we're gonna get this other one that tried to get away from me. You can see I've still got room right here so I'm gonna put another clamp just because when you're if you're trying to pull this thing out uh, <laughs> they really should have a drag rope on it which I might install one and I can show you guys later if I do that um, man th it's a lot of weight for this hose to pull those 20 pounds worth of weight and everything the water that's in there so I'm just gonna snug these up be careful you don't want to you don't want to kill it you know you don't want to break things just just give them a nice snug Get them on there and the double clamps is even better because there's just no way it's going to leak. I don't want it leaking air here. I want it leaking air out of the diffusers that it was designed for, those two 9-inch diffusers. So now that we have the hose hooked up and the rest of the 30-foot is way back there, we're going to take this, this diffuser tee and it kind of sits in there, right? And it's a little loose, but it's not. Just go ahead and push down on those gently and you, you heard it click. So those are clicked in. Those are good to go and uh, it comes with these clamps and when you lay these clamps down in there you can see they're hooped and they'll go over top of that diffuser and it's got uh, a couple screws washers and the lock washers that come with it the split lock washers make sure you use all of it you don't want this thing le uh, opening up loosening up underwater and it's just you just, once it's in there you almost don't even touch it unless you have a problem so make sure you just you know take precautions and just do everything right you've got the directions here I've done it many times before so I don't really need those today and uh, we're just gonna get over here and get some of our washers and nuts and, and I'll show you guys what I've got going on here and I'm just gonna pour those right down in one of these diffusers the up I got it turned upside down like kind of like an ashtray and you can see it comes with these little screws and you're going to take the, the screw and you're going to take this little washer and it's got a split in it and you put that one first and then it comes with a little bit bigger just flat washer and we're going to do that and you only need four of those for this particular fitting so we're going to go ahead and just set those down in there one at a time and get them started this is a phillips head i'm using this multi-tool so i'm just going to pull it out and flip it around and there i go get these down in there I wouldn't use a drill you know you could probably expedite it and use a, a cordless drill uh, but then you might strip those things out it's only plastic at, at this point you've got too much invested in it for four hundred twenty four dollars to uh, <laughs> to end up breaking this thing so I like to just hand tighten everything make sure everything is good to go don't tighten one side down more than the other I get it down in there hold it down a little bit and just snug it up that's all you need to do but you know you want it you want it somewhat tight but you you want to you don't want to kill it because if you end up if you end up doing that and I'm gonna go with a, a slightly bigger size 
Phillips head here, just so I don't strip those bolts. I can feel it. it's a little bit undersized. And I'm gonna snug those up, and that's all you're gonna do. We're gonna get another clamp, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. We got one sitting down in there. Once again, the lock washer, the smallest little split washer, goes on first. And the bigger washer, and you can see right there, if I, maybe this camera can pick it up. I got the small little split ring washer, and then the bigger one. We're gonna set that down in there on this side. We're gonna do two of those. And we're almost done putting this thing together. It actually took longer to do the sand. The sand took longer than everything. But you know what? Once you get it done, the satisfactory, the satisfaction and the, uh, you know, just being very satisfactory of what, what this thing can do for your pond, for your fish, uh, for your swimming hole or whatever, whatever you're gonna do. It's, it's worth it. This is an investment, you know. That pump comes with a three-year warranty. It's the bigger pump. And uh, it'll do, what, 10 to, 10 to 24,000 gallons on here. It's the, the HK80L pump. And I wrote down a bunch of stuff before I bought it. So, yeah, it's only 82 watts, and it'll do 10 to 24,000 gallons. And this is, uh, this is what, the, the Metalla Air air pro 5 plus they had a 3 and they had a 4 I ended up going with the 5 because it's just bigger and I don't have to add to this thing after it so now that that's in there and I'm gonna double check make sure once again I got all these nice and tight just add a little bit you don't want to over tighten them because it's just plastic down in there where those screws are I mean it's heavy duty I mean, this stuff's strong but uh you don't want to break it and then we're just gonna take these diffusers here we got a bunch of other little nuts and stuff like that, which we're not going to use right now. Double check everything, make sure our caps are on. And these nine inch diffusers just screw right on there. Boom, just like that. That's where our air, so now our air is going to go up that T and come out these two nine inch diffusers. And you, once again, you just want those things screwed on as well. You don't want them, you know, you don't want to lose because you don't want them, you know, coming off there and floating around the pond and, and then they're just gone. So screw those things down to where they're, they're tight and, and nice and snug, you know? It shouldn't, it shouldn't move anymore. That one feels good to me. I'm not gonna kill it. And you can double check it before you drop it in the water and all that good stuff. But I'm just gonna keep spinning these around very similar to a record player, the way it spins. And, uh, and just get them, get them nice and snug in there. And I'm liking it. It's got these nice handles here to pick up on it you still want to be gentle I'm gonna take it down to the pond in a, a, a wheelbarrow we got a 30 foot uh, sink you know sinkable weighted hose and on this end this is gonna actually go to your pump the other end the other one end is here so it's gonna come from the pump down through this hose and blow out air through those diffusers just like that beautiful so this comes with a couple a uh, couple different clamps and things of that sort I think I'm gonna use, uh, to be honest with you, it comes with one black clamp or black uh, hose that's a little bigger and this hose will fit over this 3 8 and I'm gonna double check it and just kind of test it for ruggedness. And we can use that if you want a straight shot onto this pump here. And I can show you, go back a little further here. You can see this pump here has just an inlet that comes out. And I'll show you that. So that's gonna, that's gonna match, but we're gonna need some kind of fitting there. So the bottom line is, is the fitting's either gonna be this 90 degree angle fitting, or we can run a straight. On this particular pump, I'm not sure about its location just yet. I'll figure it out when I get down there. So uh, I think I'm just gonna do the 90 fitting right now, cause it's good for no matter what. And you can raise it and lower it depending on what and it comes with clamps whether these clamps are stainless steel or not I'm not exactly sure I go ahead and just swap them out but I'm going to use these here since this is going to be above water you can always run these clamps later down in the water I swap the clamps that came with it out to stainless steel just to make sure they're not going to rot especially if you've got saltwater lagoon maybe you're down in Florida or somewhere tropical um, I would definitely make sure everything's stainless steel. 
So we've got this and you can see this is gonna fit right into that, that tube there. So one's gonna go over and you always wanna put your clamps over first. So on this particular one, uh, I'm, I think I'm on a bigger bite coming off of the, the motor like this. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna run the smaller side into the tube. Once again, I'm gonna use a little bit of my country lube on there and put the clamps on first. And you can double clamp these two. And I'll go back through and double them. So let's just make sure we get here first. That goes like that. Double it, make sure you be check. Pull that clamp up over top, just like so. And this one I think will be okay with just one clamp. I do like a double, but for your guys' sake, uh, just to get this done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run just a single right there just to make sure I don't pinch anything. And like I said, this is above ground, so we can always um, go back and check on this later. And you don't wanna over tighten these either because it's just rubber on rubber. So just go ahead and give like a nice little crank down there and you can see it's nice and snug. You don't want it to pinch in and squeeze into that rubber because it'll just break. And uh, this one looks a little bit too much, so I'm gonna back it off just a hair. I'm liking that. A little country lube up in here. Don't forget your, don't forget the other clamp. We're gonna put that on, on right here. And just push it right up onto the pump, just like so. Boom. And uh, we'll tighten that up. This thing's almost ready to go. We'll have it in the water in a second. And whether you use a boat or, you know, you, you, you just walk it in there, you wade it in there, or whatever you want to do, that's entirely up to you. In my particular pond, I think I'm going to have to use a boat on it and uh, go out there gently. That's why I was saying we could hook up some kind of ropes under there. They, maybe if they had some brackets here would have been better. That way you could rope it down in. That's how I would improve it on this. That way you can rope it down in. Instead right now, you know, we're gonna rely on putting that weight on this tube and I just don't, I don't know if, if I trust that. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check it out a few different ways before I even drop it in because you're talking about an incredible amount of weight going down in the bottom. I might run some kind of rope that's not tied and two of us lower it down in and then I pull the ropes back up later. But you can see, this pump is ready to go. We got the 90 degree uh, angle on here and you can run this however you want. If you want this up coming out of a fake stone or through the side of a fake stone or something, if you're gonna leave this outside, I would recommend covering it up. But it's a durable and uh, it, it, it's gonna it's gonna run you know almost 24 hours a day the whole year if you're if you're in a warmer climate you're definitely gonna have it on uh, we're out in Maryland so uh, you know once it gets winter time and that algae and stuff goes away we're probably gonna kick this thing off until spring so let's get this thing on the in the wheelbarrow take it down to the pond get it hooked up and uh, I'll see you guys shortly again it's Keith with two guys how to's and the fish kings and if you have any doubts about getting one of these, the MEA Pro 5 Plus, so far so good. I plugged it in, the motor sounds good, it's quiet. Um, the amount of volts or the watts, it's 82 watts. So it's, it's equivalent to having a light bulb on all day, you know, an old school light bulb. And uh, I'm liking it. So go get you one and use this seller on eBay. And I don't even know who they are, but I tell you what, man, they got it so quick. It's uh, Best Planet, and it's Best Dot Planet on eBay. And uh, they had them in stock. Everybody else was like, now six, eight weeks, back order. I said, nah, just give me my money back. I already paid for it, give me my money back. Boom, I found these guys. And for 24 more dollars, I got the next size up, the Pro 5, that does 10 to 24,000 gallons. So I'm tickled, you know what I'm saying? Hey, bigger's, bigger isn't always better, but bigger is better when it comes to aerating your pond or your water source, your swimming hole. Hey guys, we're down at the pond. Keith with two guys, how to's and the fish kings. I'm gonna go over uh, the best angle because I'm, I'm doing everything by myself tonight. I'm gonna go get the boat and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna drop this, this aerator system down in there nice and gentle. I don't really like the way they have it. It's very heavy for the weighted, the weighted bottom so it doesn't float but I'm gonna put it in gentle in a shallower area, uh, area and then um, at least get it in here and I can always manipulate it later, but I'm gonna keep it in the shallow, that way the ripples from it 
bring it down downstream and get the get all the air down because the the inlet there's an outlet down over there the inlets up this way on a natural creek i'm gonna since the natural flow is this way i'm gonna go ahead and put the aerator up higher even though it is deeper in this one area but the air bubbles are going to transfer across the top if i put it down here it's never going to get to the smaller little fish that are hatching up in there and hiding out up in there so i'm going to start at the very top where it's a little more shallow even though it can go to about 10 to 19 feet deep nine is probably ideal i'm going to run it about four to five and um you know as that muck on the bottom of that pond eats up too because it's just natural um, enzymes and bacteria that thing's gonna settle a little bit too. So I'm gonna go a little shallower and let it drop down in. Let me get in the boat. We're gonna put this thing in and show you the results of it. All right, I'll see you in one sec. I'm just gonna gently lift this, uh, this heavy bad boy in here. And uh, mind you, I've got the pump on shore and I disconnected my one inlet tube off the pump. So we're gonna just set this thing in the boat gently get everything situated and uh, get it down in the water and then I'm going to throw the hose up through these cattails and then we'll be we'll be pretty much set ready to go here you want to be careful with this system it's a heavy system Matala it's heavy weighted um, you definitely don't want to break it so just be gentle, but there's no other way to get in unless you're gonna physically wade up in here, which uh, I don't feel like doing right now since we have the boat. I might as well just, you know, get it in here, get this pond aerated. And I've been running another aerator here for the last week, but uh, it's time to really juice this thing up. And what I'm gonna do since we fish in here and everybody fishes in here, um, that's allowed to anyway, I do not want the aerator right in the middle because you're going to be casting up to it. You're going to be getting hung up on it. I mean, it's down deep enough, but you definitely don't want a, a crankbait or something like that coming through and ripping the top of these red, rubber uh, diffusers off. So somewhere right in here almost looks pretty good. And I'm going a little bit lower or a little bit uh, less deep just because the natural flow of this pond is this way. And the where I'm going to run the pump, the electrical supply is here. So I'm going to drop it somewhere down in here because even fishing, it's hard to get over here unless you're over where you guys are now, casting over this way. And uh, you know the bubbles coming from it should push the bait far enough away where it shouldn't it shouldn't really be a, a factor. But I like this little nook right up in here. To be honest with you, I like this. It's out of the way. I don't see any nests here that I'm going to drop it on. I am going to feel the bottom real quick. And it's got, it's probably got about a foot of sludge. So like I said, this thing is going to drop over time. So I'm going to run this right up in here like so. Make sure you get your tube nice and untangled. Flip this up. Like I said, these do have the handles on them where it makes it a little bit easier. It's still cumbersome, but if you were dropping this down into like a, you know, a 10, 12 foot hole, you'd, you'd want to be real gentle. That's why I'm just going to go a little, little less deep right now. Make sure my hose is good, I'm not going to get hemmed up and fall off. And uh, push me right back to where I was where I test, tested that spot down in there. And there's even a better spot. Let me just check this mud right up in here. I see a nice clearing where it looks like something had made a nest there, but left. So uh, let me just push the paddle down in there. It's almost, it's pre pretty deep once this muck gets out of here. So it's gonna be a little bit awkward. Let's just put it right down the very first spot where I was and double do another check. I like it. The closer to shore, the better right now. Uh, once we get some of this, the bottom muck out of here, it's got good, good bedrock down in there. So we're going to put it down in there. And over time, it, it's going to fall right where it wants to go anyway. It's going to vibrate. So let's get the handles here gently. 
You can see how heavy it is because the, the boat's dipping down. And I'm gonna run it over gently, get my bearings on this tube. Remember, we double clamped that one end of that tube. And this is exactly why, because this thing's gonna go down in there. And, uh, and we're gonna lay it flat. And we're gonna make sure we lay it flat and use this oar to push this boat back a little bit. And I'm just gonna double check it with this oar just to make sure. Yeah, I'm liking it. It's laying flat and the hose is, is going right up where I want it to go. So I'm gonna throw this hose up on shore here, closer to the outlet and everything else. And boom, we're good. So that, that bad boy's in there. And we're gonna plug it in. And we're gonna see some bubbles here in a second. And it will help, it aids in um, the natural bacteria, needs oxygen to live and the algae will grow. And it will kill that, you know, it'll kill that bacteria and the muck will lay on, layers and layers of muck. And that bacteria is up inside those layers and it just lays dormant, kind of like uh, yeast for your beer. Uh, it's only activated when it has the optimum conditions and minerals, you know. And that's what it needs. And that algae feeds off all that fish waste. And why it's feeding off the fish waste, it just grows in sunlight, you know. It, it loves sunlight to grow. And let me get this up on shore here. We're gonna go and turn this, this pump on real fast and see what this bad boy's gonna do. Okay guys, just got off the boat and showed you how the aerator was working out there in the water inside the pond and uh, it's working great. And this motor's so quiet, you can't even hear it while I'm shooting this video. I mean, it, it's just quiet, quiet, quiet. You could have it inside the house, out back of the house, anywhere. Neighbors are not gonna complain. So this system, I'm liking it. It's putting out a lot of air. Worst come to worst down the line, let's just say this pump craps out. You just swap the pump, the aerator's still in the pond, the hose is very durable and good, and you can bury your conduit, you can bury your electrical, you can bury the hose inside another um, gray electrical conduit if you need to get to a stretch like we have here where the tractors come over and we cut the grass down here and we're taking bobcats over here and driving the trucks down here if we're having a good old country time. Um, but yeah, you can see the pump and what I did is I just hooked up that, uh, that little 90 degree, remember we had the two clamps there and uh, these are fine with just two, just one clamp on each but remember we double clamped the one that's down in the actual water because when we lowered it down with that hose real gently those two clamps just gave us a little bit more bite. So on this particular unit I just have the pump here on top of this boat just for tonight and I'm going to figure it out a little better. I might even make like a little uh, a paver uh, a paver station where it sets on, maybe up a little higher in case you get some flooding down here, or I'm gonna build some kind of like a birdhouse type structure that's gonna house this pump in there and still be highly breathable but hidden. Um, or we've got some big fake rocks, so I'll build the area up a little bit, put that big fake rock over top, drill a couple holes just in the bottom or cut out an area and screen it. Um, that way it's just pulling fresh air in through that screen and through that nice fake rock. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot or whoever's got them. Just get online to make sure they got one in stock. Usually they have one or two and sometimes it's iffy. You might just have to go there and physically pick one out or get one, you know, used. I got a guy who had three or four used and I got them for a great deal. So uh, once I got that set in there and I've got it hooked right now, because uh, we don't have a plug down this close to the water. We've got one up there that we haven't uh, dug and ran new conduit over to here. And I just have this, you know, this nice uh, heavy duty commercial uh, electric reel here. It holds our electrical line and it's got a built in breaker. So I know if anything happens with this, it's going to trip this breaker. If it, does, if it gets past this breaker, it's going to trip up at the house or up wherever you're pulling power from. There's another property up there that we're pulling power from one of our other spots. So. We're good to go, I'm liking it. I'm gonna actually run this Tupperware over here tonight, and I got my little block here that won't slide. And uh, I'm gonna run it like that. If the wind comes or the rain comes or whatever, it is sheltered. I mean, it's got, it's heavy duty. So all the rain's gonna billow off. It's got these fins to keep it nice and cool. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like that, leave a little bit of air exposed, like that. Boom, 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 we're good. And I'm gonna put my, 
my uh, electric reel up underneath this boat. That way, if it does rain, that thing's even out of the out of the weather. So, uh, like I said, we're going to build a more permanent structure, and I'm sure you've got some great ideas. If you're this handy to do the pump, you can make something. You could put a little doghouse down here and put it inside there, and and just lock it tight, and, and you're good to go. Okay, guys, thanks for sticking with me there. Um, let me get this tripod. Let's go over there and look at this thing. And uh, I'm going to go up a little bit more on the side of these cattails here. And you can see it's putting a, a lot of dirt. It's coming up, which is normal, until it gets settled in there. And uh, you can see the amount of bubbles from that Pro 5, the Metala, and that's a bigger motor, and they've got them even bigger than that. But it's not much, but man, that's just enough to where it's gonna keep flow going down, keeping this culvert pipe, constantly letting this algae go until you finally just treat it. We did treat it. Um, with the bacteria, you can do the good enzymes and kind of good, put the good bacteria back in there. Not that it's, it is always in there, but this pond's been neglected for a while. So now that we got that in there, we've got our oxygen levels, the fish are going to be better. We can combat the algae. And if you're spraying algae to get, you know, you're spraying it with some kind of uh, killer, you can only do half the pond at a time anyway, or half your lake or whatever it is, because that, uh, the iron, the copper levels in there, They'll, they'll just, you're, you're killing off the fish once that oxygen's depleted. So you don't want to spray the whole dang thing or you'll have all your fish belly up the next morning. You want to do pieces of it. So now when you do the pieces of it, still I wouldn't recommend spraying the whole thing. You've got that thing going and uh, it's just putting more and more oxygen, which is what these fish need and, and other creatures, the frogs and everything to breathe. So until next time, Keith with Two Guys How To's. And that's my opinion on this pump. I liked it. The shipping was, uh, oh man, it was here. It's, it's been, wasn't even 24 hours on my door. So I'm happy on eBay. Check me out, check us out. Give us a thumbs up, give us the like, share us around. We haven't scratched the surface of anything. I do a bunch of stuff every day and I never film it. So we're just gonna film it so you guys can learn from it and enjoy from it. And hopefully it teaches you something that, you know, we had to go on the hard way and figure out. Again, Keith with two guys how to's fish kings with a z and uh i'm out of here and i actually might even do a little fishing tonight once i get back up i'm going to cool down with some iced tea and uh come back out or hit it first thing in the morning and see how much more clear this water is again i'll see you guys be safe tune in share make sure you subscribe i'm not a goat i'm a pig i'm not a pig i'm a lawyer